When ULA's CEO saw SpaceX's Raptor 3 engine, he publicly called it fake, just a partially assembled prototype. Days later, Elon Musk fired it up, proving critics dead wrong. December 24th, SpaceX completed stacking Booster 19 with this revolutionary engine. For 60 years, rocket engines needed heavy heat shields to survive re-entry. Over a ton of dead weight plus 10 tons of fire suppression systems. Raptor 3 has none of that. But what if you could eliminate all of that weight and complexity in one revolutionary design? To understand why Raptor 3 is such a breakthrough, we need to talk about a problem that's haunted rocket engineering since the space age began. Every rocket engine that returns through Earth's atmosphere faces brutal reality. Re-entry creates plasma temperatures exceeding 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Traditional rocket engines are covered in sensors, wiring, hydraulic lines and fuel pipes all exposed where they're vulnerable to this inferno. The standard solution. Add heavy metallic heat shields. Raptor 2 used these shields extensively, wrapping around the engine bay like armor plating. But here's the nightmare. Each heat shield added over a ton of mass per booster. Multiply that by 33 engines, and you're hauling 33 tons of protection equipment that does nothing except defend against heat. But it gets worse. Behind those shields, you need fire suppression systems. SpaceX installed over 10 tons of equipment, nitrogen tanks, distribution lines, sensors, just to protect against fires that the enclosed heat shields themselves create conditions for. You add shields to protect components, then need fire suppression to protect against problems the shields create, and suddenly you're carrying 11 plus tons, whose only job is protecting other equipment. And it's not just weight. After every flight, those shields need inspection. External plumbing needs checking. Fire suppression needs servicing. For a company trying to achieve airline-level reusability, this inspection burden is unacceptable. So how did SpaceX solve a problem that's plagued rocket engineering for 60 years? The answer lies in regenerative cooling taken to an extreme, never before attempted. Instead of protecting external components from heat, SpaceX eliminated external components entirely. Everything that used to sit outside, sensors, valves, secondary flow paths, control systems, got internalized into the engine's main structure. But you need a way to keep those internalized components from melting. Enter regenerative cooling on steroids. Liquid methane in SpaceX's tanks sits at negative 297 degrees Fahrenheit. Before reaching the combustion chamber, Raptor 3 routes it through intricate cooling channels, machined directly into the engine's structure. These channels wrap around every surface that would normally require external protection, with methane flowing through internal passages, absorbing heat continuously. Here's the beautiful part. This isn't wasted energy. Heat absorbed from components actually preheats the methane before combustion. Warmer fuel burns more efficiently, improving specific impulse. The cooling system that eliminates heat shields also improves engine performance. You're solving two problems with one elegant solution. But creating these complex internal cooling channels requires advanced manufacturing, SpaceX developed what Elon Musk claims is the most advanced 3D metal printing technology in the world. Using additive manufacturing with proprietary SX500 Inconel Superalloy, SpaceX prints engine components impossible to create through traditional machining. Internal cooling channels with complex geometries print them directly into the structure, sensors embedded inside, Print the mounting points during the build. Multiple separate parts consolidated. Print it as one continuous structure. Components that used to be assembled from dozens of individual parts are now printed as integrated units. You can create cooling channels following optimal thermal paths rather than being constrained by what's machinable. 
You can eliminate hundreds of mechanical connections that added weight and complexity. SpaceX can iterate these designs overnight, update the digital file, and print a new version. This is how they went from Raptor 3 concept to flying hardware in under two years. The result? Raptor 3 doesn't require any heat shield, eliminating heat shield mass and complexity, as well as fire suppression systems. It's lighter, has more thrust, and has higher efficiency than Raptor 2. But would it actually work in reality? August 3rd, 2024, McGregor, Texas. Raptor 3. Serial number one mounted on the test stand for its first hot fire. This wasn't just another test, it was proof you could eliminate heat shields without melting the engine. The test lasted 30 seconds. Full duration. No anomalies. Then came the industry's revealing reaction. Tori Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance, looked at photos of Raptor 3 and publicly stated it was a partially assembled engine without controllers, fluid management, or TVC systems. This is United Launch Alliance. They build the Vulcan rocket, launch major U.S. military payloads, a joint venture between Boeing and Lockheed Martin. Their CEO looked at SpaceX's finished engine and genuinely believed it wasn't complete. That's how radical Raptor 3's design really is. Gwyn Shotwell's response was perfect. Works pretty good for a partially assembled engine, showing Raptor 3 firing with all systems integrated within that clean exterior. The ice visible during testing. That's condensation from cryogenic methane flowing through internal channels, proving the cooling works effectively. SpaceX didn't just fire Raptor 3 once. By December 2024, they'd conducted over 300 tests with cumulative duration exceeding 40,000 seconds. In September 2025, they achieved a 354-second continuous burn, the longest for Raptor 3. These aren't gentle tests. SpaceX routinely stress tests engines to failure to find breaking points. The first real validation comes with Flight 12, scheduled February-March 2026. Booster 19, completed December 24th, will carry the first operational Raptor 3 engines. Ship 39 is in final preparation. Flight 12 will see 35 engines firing in concert. SpaceX increased from 33 to 35 on Block 3 boosters generating 9,800 tons of thrust. That's 2.8 times the Saturn V's power, all without heat shields. The numbers tell the breakthrough story. Raptor 3 produces 280 metric tons, force of thrust, 50 tons more than Raptor 2, 95 tons more than Raptor 1. Specific impulse hits 350 seconds for the sea level variant. But here's where engineering elegance compounds. Raptor 3's dry mass is under 1,525 kilograms. Raptor 1 weighed 2,080 kilograms, with total system mass hitting 3,630 kilograms. Raptor 2 improved to 2,875 kilograms total. Raptor 3... 36% weight reduction versus Raptor 1 while producing 50% more thrust. The real revolution multiplies across the entire vehicle. A Block 2 booster with 33 Raptor 2 engines carried roughly 43 tons of heat, shielding and fire suppression. Block 3 with 35 Raptor 3 engines eliminates essentially all of that. When you save 40 tons on the booster, you can carry 40 additional tons of propellant. More propellant means more performance margin or more payload capacity. Block 3 Starship targets 100 plus tons to orbit in reusable configuration versus Block 2's 60 tons. That 40-ton improvement comes almost entirely from Raptor 3. The thrust-to-weight ratio pushes toward 200 to 1 versus Raptor 2's 150 to 1. This matters because every kilogram of engine mass saved multiplies through the rocket equation. 
A lighter engine means less structure, lighter tanks, less propellant needed, even lighter tanks. Improvements cascade. But there's another dimension beyond raw numbers. Maintainability. Falcon 9 boosters need weeks between flights for inspection and refurbishment. Raptor 3's integrated design means drastically reduced inspection requirements. No external plumbing to check, no heat shields to remove, no fire suppression to service. The engine is essentially a sealed unit. SpaceX's goal is airline-level turnaround, land in the morning, launch in the evening. December 24th, 2024. SpaceX completed full stacking of Booster 19 in just 25 days, half the time for previous boosters. Block 3 architecture with Raptor 3 has matured from concept to production hardware. Both Booster 19 and Ship 39 will undergo cryogenic proof testing at Massey's, validating structures can handle flight stresses. Flight 12 targets, February-March 2026, from Upgraded Orbital Launch Pad 2, featuring dual quick disconnect systems and flame trench. The mission will test 35 Raptor 3 engines through full flight regime, launch, boost back, landing, all without heat shields. If successful, SpaceX targets 25 Starship launches from Starbase in 2026, up from four in 2024. They're building Gigabay to accelerate production toward 1,000 Starships per year capacity. Raptor 3 is also optimized for Mars. Methane slash oxygen propellants can be manufactured on Mars using the Sabatier process with CO2 atmosphere and water ice. The regenerative cooling maximizes efficiency from locally produced Martian fuel. Looking ahead, Raptor 4 will push beyond 300 tons force per engine, with thrust to mass exceeding 200 to 1, targeting engine cost below $1,000 per ton of thrust. But right now, Booster 19 sits at Starbase, with 35 Raptor 3 engines installed. Ship 39 is being prepped. The Block 3 revolution is two months from flight test. The skeptics who called it partially assembled didn't understand what they were seeing. They were looking at the future of rocket engineering and assuming it was incomplete because it looked nothing like the past. When Tori Bruno called Raptor 3 partially assembled, he revealed how far SpaceX has leaped ahead. This engine eliminates 60 years of heat shield complexity through regenerative cooling brilliance. February 2026, Flight 12 proves whether this engineering miracle works at scale. 35 engines, 9,800 tons of thrust, zero heat shields. The future of space access launches in two months. Hit like if you're watching Flight 12 with us. Subscribe to New Space Review for launch coverage. What's your prediction? Will Raptor 3 perform flawlessly?